Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I'd do a really chilled video, sit here and chat to you guys whilst I do my makeup. I'm not going to properly like go into everything that I'm using, but I just thought this would be a nice way to have a chat, answer any of your questions that I've been getting recently. Quite a lot to do with uni, some other bits are a little bit random, but I'm just going to have a little chat whilst I'm doing my makeup. Okay, so first question is from... Darcy and she has said your personal pros and cons of living in student halls Ugh. Pros I think that it's a really good way to make friends because you're all in the same boat like everyone in your flat Everyone in your entire building is all in like a similar position so it's really easy to like mingle make friends and Everyone's got a similar mindset. It's really easy to just go and knock on someone's door Especially in the first week when no one cares and everyone wants to meet new people most of the time it's convenient um, if you're at a campus uni because at Lincoln specifically our halls are so much closer than the housing to the uni so for some of my lectures I had to walk just five minutes to get to my lecture theatre so that's a massive bonus about Lincoln uni. Cons I'd say is that you might not get on with your flatmates um, like myself like you might not click with them and bond with them so it might be awkward for the year but usually it's fine especially if you've got one person you get on with in your flat. Other cons like Again, untidy people like just mess being left around. It's quite stressful if you're the complete opposite. Noise is one of the major ones because the walls are super thin and my our windows were actually really thin as well. So I would hear people a lot and like just general like smells of like weed and smoke and stuff. It's not my sort of things. Yeah, I'd say those were the cons for me. But yeah, I, I, I'd highly recommend living in students, student halls for the first year because I think it's just an experience that every uni student should have. Like... I know some, sometimes it's con more convenient if you're li going to uni that's in your hometown. It's so much more convenient to live at home because you'll save so much money. Um, but if you do get the, to go to halls and experience that life, you'll just see how different it is, how funny it is. And it'll be something to remember like when you're like 30 or whatever. Okay, so someone asked, have you got any tips for revising A-level unified biology third paper? So this girl, Phoebe, I think her name is, does the exact same exam board as me. So I did OCR when I was doing um, um, my A-levels. I was on the OCR exam board. So I think it's like the Oxford and Cambridge something. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but yeah, I was on that exam board and it was so difficult. The last bi biology paper, the third one, included everything you'd learn over the entire two years. So it's so content jam-packed, it's ridiculous. Um, so she asked me like what I did to revise for it, like short term, because obviously her exam's coming up. And my advice was to make sure you've covered everything on the specification, print off the specification or find it online. Um, then you can like double check that you know everything that could potentially come up in your exam. I used to make cue cards based on the specification itself. So I could literally, I literally had all of like the concise notes about each topic like on cue cards and I'd just have to memorize them cue cards um, or get people to like test me on them. I'd also highly recommend like using websites like Memrise for like definitions and stuff like that. Snap Revise is amazing if for like the sciences. I think they only do chemistry and biology on there. But honestly, I'd definitely invest in it if you can. Luckily, one of my teachers had like a free code for it. So um, I was able to use it for free, but I think it does cost, but it's completely worth it. She honestly, the woman doing them videos helped me through my A-level biology. What else did I say to do to her? I can't remember. Oh, I said to her as well, just go over the massive processes that will de like 100% come up or have a massive chance of coming up. So like processes that take up to like five, six, seven pages. So photosynthesis, respiration, muscle contraction, stuff to do with the lungs, the immune system, things like that are like, really likely to come up at least one of them so if you're really secure on those like big processes that have a lot of like information then you'll be you'll do great if there's like a six mark question or something or eight marks or whatever going through all the processes and making sure you're secure with them rather than going over these little nifty examples that you could just lose one or two marks but if you've got processes in then you'll be able to get the the bigger marks yeah that's what i do short term just go over the processes make sure you're secure on those and just continuously go through like your flashcards or mind maps whatever you have to try and get everything ingrained in your memory oh you know let me hear you singing hey mama don't stress your mind abby's asked favorite mo movie genres and films you would recommend so um 
films I'd recommend. So my favourite movie genre I think of all time has to be like thrillers, something with a bit of a twist. I really love like films that have like a massive twist at the end and like you have no idea that it's coming. So for example Shutter Island, The Usual Suspects, um, I really loved um, at the minute Safe, like I don't know if I've mentioned it enough in my vlogs but if I haven't Safe is a, a great one to watch. If you love Dexter you will you'll be happy to know that Michael C. Hall is like sort of the main focus um, and it kind of like follows his life. Basically his daughter goes missing and there's just this huge like plot twist like throughout the whole thing there's just loads of little storylines going on and at the end I was so shocked with the ending. I was just like wow that's amazing and everything's concluded. I love something that doesn't have a shitty cliffhanger at the end that makes me feel like I have no idea what's going on with my life. Like, I just love a good conclusive ending where everything all adds up together. I just, I just find them so satisfying. So I definitely recommend Safe as a Netflix series to watch if you haven't already, because that's relatively new. And then there's also Shutter Island, The Usual Suspects. I do love a good Disney film now and again, especially if I'm like feeling very anxious in the evenings and like, I don't know, I get quite anxious in the evenings and that's when it like hits me the most. Sometimes I'll watch like a Disney film. Um, you, I, I know this is not the question, but YouTubers that I'd recommend watching at the minute, I love Lucy Wood, Caitlin Rose, who also does uni videos frequently. Sophia and Chintzy, obviously, I absolutely love those girls. Leah Turner, absolutely love her videos. She's lovely and fingers crossed I'm gonna be meeting her very soon, like in the coming weeks in London. I'll pop some on the screen if I've missed any, but those are sort of YouTubers I've been loving at the minute. Right, so Phoebe has asked how to deal with absolute reptiles at uni. This made me laugh last night when I read this. Can't deal with bitchy people, so I'm properly nervous. I'll end up decking one of them. Snaky people. I wouldn't say I came across snakes at uni. I mainly came across like very two-faced people and just people who hadn't grown up really. So it's more like immature people that you'll be facing. However, I just learned to like block those people out. Like I don't need those people in my lives. I don't think it's something to worry about at all. Like, so I think you'll be fine. Like, I don't know how to, to deal with them. I sort of just ignore them. I'm like, they're so irrelevant in my life. Like I don't even need to waste my mind thinking about these people and just focus on what makes me happy. Um, just focus on my life and my career, my goals for the future and stuff. So yeah, if you can try and like block out um, negative people or people who are like two-faced, nasty. Um, although it obviously hurts originally, like I've been hurt so many times, um, just in the past, not at uni specifically. Um, but now like as I've grown older I've learned to ignore those sort of people and don't let it get to me uh, Initially you do like even when I get hate comments on YouTube, which is becoming more frequent now So please be nice to me um, I do sit there for a second and be like oh my god everyone hates me like the negative always like outweighs the pot um, the positives in your head when it really shouldn't be like that so I'm trying to get into the mindset whenever I get a hate comment to be like um to go off and go onto a different video and look at all the nice positive comments. I always screenshot my like favorite positive comments because honestly, when I'm in those moods where them negative comments get to me, I just look at them and I'm like, I'm so silly. Like there's these lovely people who are um, spending their time and effort supporting me. So I should not be crying right now. <laughs> so yeah, I just say, if you can ignore them, I know it's hard, but it will be better at the end of the day. And in a few years time, you'll be like, thank God I didn't let them get to me. So, moving on, Ellie has asked, what's one thing you wish you knew on moving day? I wish that I wasn't nervous at all. I Throughout the summer, I was buzzing for uni. Like, I know a lot of people got really worried when it came to uni, and I know people are already worrying, but I was so happy to get out of my hometown. I was, like, so buzzing until the day before when I started to get a bit nervous. Like, what if no one likes me because no one liked me in my hometown? I started overthinking everything. So, one thing I wish I'd told myself... Um, before first day is that everyone is so like less judgmental everyone wants to get to know you um everyone wants to make friends like it's not something to worry about at all like everyone is so genuine and lovely especially for the first week like me and Megan always say when we film together that everyone is the best version of themselves in Freshers Week so it's super easy to like mingle start conversations and everything so I just tell myself don't worry about Freshers or the first day because everything's going to be fine and everything will work out really naturally. Ellie's also asked um, best advice for making friends 
just go to everything you can. Obviously, if you're not a drinker, you don't have to go out. I'd say just go to, just get involved in pre-drinks. Like, you could just drink, like, water or squash or something. But just get involved in the games. Even just being in the room and just socialising will still help you make friends. Like, no one rules you out if you don't drink or anything, because we like i'm not a drinker like after freshers i was like oh, i'll stick to like once every other week or once every month <laughs> yeah no one like singles you out if you are if you're not as into to drinking as the typical uni student's supposed to be if you know what i mean and final question from ellie she's asked did you have any issues concerning budgeting if so how did you handle it budgeting in first semester was so easy because i'd worked over summer i'd saved so much money up for like freshers and stuff and then the first big bulk of student loan came in i in my first year i got the highest loan so obviously that's a massive bonus for me and i survived perfectly from september to december i do however wish that i'd have saved money because i had so much money i was like oh my god this is amazing and i just bought people so many christmas presents like i went so overboard like more overboard than i have ever been before at christmas because i i do love christmas and like treating the people i love in my life um but yeah i just went too far at christmas when i could have actually saved money and still got people like nice presents but just not gone too far so i'd say if you can save money for after Christmas because that's when more money comes out for your accommodation well at Lincoln it did anyway like more money comes out then you'll have less money you won't have like been able to work if and if you don't have a part-time job like I I didn't whilst I was in uni then you you're most likely not gonna get money over the Christmas period unless you just ask for that for Christmas or whatever so it is it does get to like a very big struggle um at that point and from January to April that was like the worst period for me because I had no money I was like living off bare minimum <laughs> and everything so if you can if you do need a part-time job go for it but my plan is not to have a part-time job whilst I'm actually at uni I just want to like enjoy my experience and focus on my studies rather than doing a part-time job because I can like I'm fortunate enough to get a loan that's going to actually cover me whereas some people like have no choice but to get a job so I am thankful in that aspect but I don't think I'll be getting a job whilst I'm at uni, but for now, if you didn't know, I have a part-time job in summer, so I'm going to be earning all over summer, and then I'll have money to go to uni with, which I'm buzzing for. Like, I can't wait to have some money, because uni has, like, drained me from all my expenses. So, budgeting tips. I have done a budgeting video before, so I will leave that down below in case anyone wants to watch, like, a, a bit more of an in-depth video about me talking about budgeting and my top tips to help you like save money throughout the year and stuff um but yeah my main one would be um to save your money as much as possible from the beginning and like put it in a savings account as well so you can't really reach it that often so Rochelle has asked I would love to hear about what it was like having to look after yourself cooking dinner making sure you're organized and everything um I feel like again I was more worried um before than when it was actually happening so again don't worry yourself about the new independence that you're going to get um because it's actually fine when you like reach uni it is quite overwhelming because um i think again me and megan have said this in a video before but um at home if you're like stressed and a levels are so stressful and horrible and like the worst period of my life full stop you at least could come home to your family your mum would like well like my mum would cook my meals and like We'd have like family time, like I'd have people that loved me around me. Whereas like, obviously at uni I have my friends, but when you go home you have to like, think about all the other things you have on your plate. So, have I done enough independent learning? How Am I up to date with my um, lecture notes? Do I need to wash my laundry? I need to cook my dinner at this time. It's just like a lot, a lot of things going through your mind, especially in the first, first couple of months is a bit like, oh shit, like this, I'm on my own now, like everything is on me. Um, but you do get used to it very quickly like I wasn't expecting myself to because I was so un independent before I went to uni I relied on a, like my parents and my boyfriend and stuff so it was a massive change for me but if you're already like quite in independent cook your own meals do your own washing and stuff um all the time then you'll be fine and if not I got through it and I was so unindependent so at least that's hope for you guys <laughs> I'm really excited for all of like the videos I've got planned as well um, over summer. I've got quite a lot of ideas going, but if you are feeling something or you want me to hop on a challenge or you've seen something going around that you think I might um, 
be all right at doing then please don't hesitate to comment down below if you want to see anything on my channel i always note your guys ideas down and i'm in the process of getting through them all i've got lots of like uni videos coming up so hopefully that helps you all out i feel like i spoke really weird then but yeah i'm I'm getting through all these uni videos which will go up on my vlog channel. I always put my uni video videos on my vlog channel because I feel like, because my uni vlogs have got done so well, I feel like all the people who love my uni content are over on my vlog channel. So I always put like sit down uni chatty videos over there. If you were wondering why I did that. This is usually for more like professionally um, done videos. However, today I'm literally just sat in front of my window with this shitty background so I don't know why I'm saying that this is professional because it's just not. I just feel like I put more time and effort into my main channel videos because they take a lot more to edit and stuff. So that's what I sort of mean by professional. Just means that I take longer on these videos whereas like my vlogs are just me putting all my clips from the day together. And as you can see like my content has stepped up like since I've finished my uni my first year at uni like I've been uploading pretty much every day whether it's a blog post a vlog or a main channel video and I hope you've realized that I am putting more effort in I hope it's recognizable but yeah I'm, I'm super appreciative of everyone who does support my my vids and I can't believe I hit 2,000 subscribers on my vlog channel and we're so close to it on this channel too so I don't think it will be long before I hit it unless I just start decreasing in subscribers which will be shitty we love when we do that I would love to know what you guys are up to this weekend because I'm guessing this video will probably go up at the weekend Let me know what you're up to if you've got any plans for the week. Uh, I'd love to hear What you guys are doing it might give me some inspiration what to do soon. I'm going bowling tonight with one of my cousins uh, So that's exciting. I didn't actually vlog today, which is Quite sad because I just was busy like I went to the gym this morning with Megan and since then I've just been putting loads of stuff on eBay so I didn't really do anything interesting during the day, so there's no point in vlogging just the evening. I'm sure I'll put some sna um, some Snapchats or some Instagram stories. Me at bowling with my cousin. So I've just done my makeup. Thank you very much for watching this really chill, chatty video. I hope it, it helped you and I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to smash the thumbs up if you want me to do more of these in the future. Comment down below if there's anything you want me to do. And thank you. I'll see you in my next vid. Bye.